Hello and welcome to Legal Basics with Saru Law Global and my name is Tian. Today, still on the employment law series, we're going to deal with the different kinds of contract. So there are four different kinds of employment contract. First, you have the piecework, then you have the casual labor, then you have the term contract, and then you have the unlimited term that people would sometimes call a permanent uh, employment. So now, uh, piecework works a lot like how you would just uh, go and find a lady and ask her to do your laundry. Uh, when you negotiate, you give them a specific amount of work. So for piecework generally, uh, it doesn't matter when a person will do it or how long they will take to do it. So you're not paying them for one hour. You're paying them to do the laundry. So they could do the laundry in 30 minutes or they could do the laundry in three hours. What, what matters to you is that the work is done. So when you agree uh, on a piecework contract, you agree this amount of work for this amount of money. Usually the amount of time it takes is not a fundamental part of the contract unless it is so extreme. Unless uh, probably you contract someone to do, let's say, videography on your wedding and then uh, they have to extend. But generally it's just the piece, the piecework, the, the work itself. And now secondly, you have the casual laborer. The casual labor is what uh, what we call kibarua. You know, like how maybe a, a farm, farm help would go to a, a person who owns land every morning and be paid maybe 400 bob to till the land between 8 and 7. Or, or how uh, some people will have maybe a, a help come over to their house once in a while to help them clean. So as far as casual labor goes, uh, the, the employee is 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 only contracted for that day's work. So the Employment Act uh, defines casual labor as as a day's worth of work it done in a day and which does not exceed 24 hours. So now for casual labor, every day you enter into a new contract. So if a person came and they worked for you on Monday, uh, on Tuesday when they come, it is assumed that you have renegotiated and restarted. So as far as a casual casual work goes there's there's no notice so that means if i if if somebody gives me some work to do today and then tomorrow they do not have work for me they don't need to give me notice or if i do work for someone today and then tomorrow i'm not available or i need to do something else then i also don't need to give them notice but now for casual labor sometimes people have labor casual laborers come in for a very prolonged period of time and this could be a way that uh, employers avoid some of the responsibilities of the more long-term employment relationships so now when the law does not recognize casual labor that has been going on for so long such that the aggregate of all the days worked amounts to more than a month and amount to more than three months so if a person has been working for you for example and they come in every day for a month or for, a, for an aggregate number of days that amounts to 30 or even extends to three months, then the law will stop considering that arrangement to be casual labor and it will start to consider that arrangement to be a term contract and all the benefits and all the rights and all the obligations that attach to a term contract will then attach to this relationship. Third is a term contract. A term contract is uh, basically what people would, uh, what people get in, in organizations that are funded, where the funding is not constant or it's not predictable. Uh, some donor funded NGOs will give term contracts and th this usually would run maybe a year, maybe two years, maybe five. Some organizations have a policy to have term contracts and there's been some arguments that term contracts are good because they they let an employer to assess is this is this person good for us are they performing because there's been some arguments that permanent employment like people who work for government generally uh, do not perform so much because they are very at ease nobody will end their contract so now a term contract is fixed a fixed term contract has a date that it lapses so for instance if a contract starts from the first of june and ends on the 30th of may in two years so first of june 2021 ends on the 30th of may 2023 
on the 30th of May, the contract will lapse. So that means beyond that date, the employee will no longer be part in the employment of the employer. So now as far as term contracts go, it is good for the people in this relationship, the employer and the employee, to be clear about when it ends, because if they extend without without renewing the contract, if if they extend without renewing the contract, then it is not clear whether whether this employee is still a term contract, whether they still work for them uh, as a as a permanent employee now. So it's it's very important to be very clear with the dates, so that when it lapses, either the contract is renegotiated and renewed or the employee ceases to work for the employer. Now, the fourth type of employment is the permanent or unlimited term contract. This is when people have a contract with the employer, but it does not say when the em employment will end or when it will lapse. So in such a contract, there is still some flexibility that the law provides for the employee and the employer to terminate the relationship through notices. So the notices, how long a notice is will be dealt with in our broadcast that is dealing with termination. So for for an unlimited term contract, uh, the, the obligations that attach to that kind of relationships, the obligations on the employer are slightly uh, bigger than the ones that attach to the other short term contracts. For example, uh, while the employer does not need to give leave days to a, a, an employee on piecework, and while they, while they would not need to give leave days to a casual laborer, they would need to give leave days to a person on an unlimited term of contract, they would need to give them certain benefits uh, like health, health, and if they terminate them, they would have to give them adequate notice, either the minimum provided under the Act or the 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 amount of time that has been pre-agreed on the employment contract. I hope that this broadcast has been very instructive to you. And before we finish our broadcast, we would like to uh, introduce the mentorship program that is under Chigiti and Chigiti Advocates, that is for young advocates who want some direction and some support in the profession. It will be running from the first week of April indefinitely if you would like to sign up and if you have any more inquiries you can write to chigiti at chigiti.co.ke that's chigiti at chigiti.co.ke if you have any questions regarding today's broadcast you can write to us at info at cyrologlobal.com that's info at cyrologlobal at cyrologlobal.com you can also write to us through our old uh, gmail address which is cyrologlobal at gmail.com. We also like to thank Chigiti and Chigiti Advocates for the support in the shooting of this series and to Mushiri Frames who are the videography crew responsible for these great videos and this great editing. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.